Hi, nice to see you all again here in the shop. In the last video I covered the conversion from a battery powered device to USB, but sometimes we need off-grid power and in this video we will build our own power bank. Very cheap, very easy and the most of the stuff we already have in the shop. So let's go! Alright, what is the basic idea? What I want to build is a high capacity USB power bank with the stuff we already have and what we have are the batteries for our cordless drills. This for example is an 18 volt Ryobi. Everything above 12 volt I don't want to cover in this video. I will do a later video how to um, get every kind of voltage out of this thing. Um, but I want to focus on this 12 volt batteries. This is a Hitachi 12 volt for example and this is uh, our Parkside, they are very very cheap and if you go to such kind of battery they have 2 amp hours 12 volts so if we break that down to 5 volt USB you have plenty of power and a normal fairy light maybe runs some weeks on, on one of these things and yeah you have already the loading infrastructure so what I want to do is taking this go to USB and bring that in one housing. Why we focus on 12 volts? 12 volts is exactly what you have in your car. And there are these little plugs for your power connector in the car so that you can hook up your phone, for example, and they cost one to two bucks. So we wanna build a kind of connection from this to this little adapter, and then we have our USB power bank. That's how easy it is. Yeah, and I show you how to modify this little housings to achieve that. Let's go! Okay, you have our, we have our positive, our negative, and yeah, that's a red wire, a black wire, and, and then we have some spots uh, Occasionally that happens that there are some more spot solder posts free or available on on the on the circuit board so we can measure if we have by accident already two uh, open ports so that we do not have to necessarily and there it is we have our positive end here that's a power plus and there is our negative end and this post is already or is also free so we can instead of put our, putting our cables additionally to that onto that board we can use this both available and free holes to solder that in otherwise if you do not have this you can also add your cables here on this spot or there, that's also possible. But we use what we have here. The material here, you know, this is an old piece of wire from the computer. That's, that's one of the parts I always remove if I have an old computer that should go to, to the trash. I remove the wires because these are really good, nice, flexible and capable wires you have different colors so it's always good to have just to make sure that you have the right color at hand and it costs you nothing this part I want to install everything in a tube so this will be the new top part of the battery because then if this is the top part we can 
easily use still use the same loading infrastructure as this fits into the normal charger and um, on the other hand we have something that fits into a tube so that we can more or less make it waterproof like this you know this is the tube and um, you can extend these tubes or close it yeah this is the idea behind that new cover i copy the holes in here and we're good to go This is our connector. We have this end and um, this is soldered to this spot so I don't want to use this whole piece and solder it on. I just use the solder connections that are already there and the same applies to this outer contact. Uh, it is soldered to this spot so I use this as well for the other connection. So this one, one cable, and this one, the other. To fit the whole thing better in and still maintain the housing, we can, we can just cut it a little bit to size. That means that we you just cut the housing somewhere here to make it a bit smaller and give the cables enough room. check the function it works pretty good but as this converter will always consume some energy I decided to build a switch in that cover and this will be this one The final assembly, as you can see, the hot glue in here cooled down, so everything is ready and set. So yeah, we built that or bring that in the housing, so we can use little screws alongside this little rim to give it a fixed depth. Otherwise, we can adjust it, you know but I need a little bit more space in here. You can take longer tubes as you like, but I want to have it as small as possible. And then we can connect that to our power source, the battery, stuff everything in, and we're good to go. So, can you see that? So it has power, here we have it, our very own DIY high capacity USB power bank. Out of the stuff basically you have in the shop. So even if you have to buy the tubes or this little power converter, um, it is very little you have to spend to gain a very robust, very flexible high capacity device. I show you mine in a close up now, you know, uh, I changed the appearance of mine. It now looks a little bit like a kind of you know, prop 
from a movie or from a Fallout game. So this was my choice. You can just leave it as it is gray or paint it black or whatever you like or make it orange just to find it better um, at the outdoors or yeah, whatever you like. Make it your project. Um, there are some follow-on videos I want to do. One is how to utilize or for what to utilize these batteries, um, not only to cut it to USB power, but there's so much juice in, we want to use it for different projects as well. And I want to cover what you can do with a kind of higher voltage, like 18, 20, whatever you use. I will do this um, conversion with an 18 volt Ryobi uh, battery to any voltage lower than 18 volts. So basically what we're building is a off-grid benchtop power supply. It sounds complicated, it is not, and you will be surprised how few you have to spend to have a very nice tool. So follow me along with this one and you know, always share, like, subscribe. I hope I see you next time around. Happy crafting.